Hello world and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's episode we are going to talk about X-Ray and a little bit overview on AWS monitoring tools. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> So this is another video on the series of monitoring and I have created the first introduction video. If you have not watched it, maybe you should go and click on it. And then I have created a second video that is more like an auxiliary video where I talk about artillery. That is the load testing tool we are going to use to generate traffic in our application. So the project that we are going to see now in this video trying x-ray will start from this uh, second video so if you want to set up your application as I have it you should go and check that video first. So in this video as I said we are going to talk about AWS tools especially about x-ray. I have not talked about x-ray before in my videos and I think it's time to tackle that. I think AWS has like three main monitoring tools. It has CloudWatch, CloudTrail and x-ray. I have already talked about CloudWatch and the custom metrics in other videos. I will leave them in the card and in the description box. I have not talked about CloudTrail and I have not talked about X-Ray, but I want to focus on X-Ray because I think it's the most interesting in my opinion. So basically what CloudTrail is, is a log of actions that somebody or something perform on your AWS account. So if you uh, don't have it enabled, it will just show you the some days back uh, information. If you enable, you can store that and have like a whole audit auditing log of what happened in your account. And it's really, really good for uh, audits and security analysis and knowing exactly what is going on your account. So Lambda will uh, inform CloudTrail what are the actions that it's doing, like writing to a Dynamo or opening some, I don't know, uh, calling API gateway or whatever it's going to be locked there but I don't know I, it's a very useful tool but I don't see that it deserves a video but I think x-ray it does because it's a very interesting tool and it has I don't know um, interesting visualization that uh, it can help a lot when trying to troubleshoot for errors so x-ray is not only for lambda it also works for any other piece of code that wants to instrument x-ray and we will see that we will need to do changes to our uh, application to support x-ray so then when we, uh, we we can see an x-ray is all kind of things we can see our application kind of service map so what services call to what so you can see uh, AWS services like Dynamo, API Gateway, Lambda, SQS and things like that. It doesn't work for asynchronous calls so that's kind of a pity so if you're using things that are asynchronous then you will not see it in x-ray but you can see a lot of the calls in your APIs and uh, in your applications and then you can see for me one of the nice things is the kind of tracing like you can see where the time of each um, kind of execution for example in lambda took time so you call an api gateway and you can see how long it took to initialize a lambda and how long it took to put in the dynamo db and things like that so you can see the different bits of code that how long it took also with extra you can create your own segment so if you want to know exactly uh, how long a part of your application takes, like a process or something in particular, you can create your own segments and use the X-Ray library to do that. I will not show it in the video, but if you want to see it, let me know in the description box and I can make a video about that, showing you how to create custom segments and how to see them. But in this video, we are just instrumenting our application with what is out of the box and comes very easily. So now let's go to the code and to the console and see how we configure X-Ray in our application and how it works in practice. So let's start our video by opening the project that we have been working in the artillery video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave you the link in the description box and in the card where we set up the artillery to load test our application. And also we set up the project that we are going to use to test all these monitoring tools. This is a project, it's pretty simple, and we are going to do the modifications we need in order to get the tracing for X-Ray. The first thing we are going to do is use the serverless plugin tracing 
uh, and install it in our project. That plugin, what it does is enable X-Ray in our uh, project pretty easily. So we just install the project npm install the name of the project. And when it's ready, then we need to uh, also add the plugin to the serverless YAML. If you want to know more about serverless framework plugins, I have a video about it. I have a whole playlist about some plugins, so go ahead and check it out. So now we have added the plugins and then we need to add these roles. This role will do is to give permissions to uh, put the tracing in X-Ray. Because as you know, in AWS, nothing has permissions until you give some permissions. And the other thing we need to do is to enable the tracing for each of the functions. So to do that, this uh, tracing property it appears now because of the plugin and we need to set it to true in all the lambdas that we want to give permission uh, to enable tracing. So we set it in all of them and then we go to our handler and we have to do small modification in our code to get the x-ray working. What we need to do in the handler is to add this to uh, this library. We are going to require the AWS X-Ray SDK and then we are going to capture all the AWS flow that goes to this AWS SDK using this library. So now whenever we use SQS or Dynamo then all the traffic will get captured by this um, new SDK that we are importing. So this is pretty nice and we can capture the traffic pretty easily. We don't need to change anything in our code besides these two lines. Don't forget to install this new library in your project because this doesn't come in the Lambda by default. So as the AWS SDK does, so just install this and then you can just deploy it and we can see this in action. So I will speed up the deployment so we can go to see what is going on. So after we finish deploying, then we can run the artillery simple uh, script that basically just uh, thinks in the database. So it just orders pizza and then we can go to X-Ray while this executes and we can see what is going on. So when we open X-Ray, we can see the service map there that will show us all the kind of uh, different services that is involved in the execution of this. So here we can see that we have a Lambda and then some Dynamo and that's it's very small because we are only invoking this lambda that is the making the, the order and then we are saving to the dynamo table. But if we want to invoke the whole application, we can just run this flow uh, script that will do the put order in the, in the database and also it will uh, get the order. So this should trigger all the lambdas and do everything for us. So then we can just run that and see what happens. So now it's executing. So while it's executing, we can go again to X-Ray and we can refresh our service map and we will see that there are more uh, services being used. Then we can see that we have this uh, green ball. So if it's green, it means that it's a success. So basically, if there start to appear some errors or some faults, we will see that these balls is like a pie chart. So it will show a percentage of these have errors or a percentage of these are throttle. And then we will see that in the, in the green border. Also inside, you can see that there is this average 49 milliseconds, for example, and that's the average latency for of the service in this select time range that in this case is the last five minutes, but you can change it there. And then we have the, the traces per minute for the selected time frame. So in these cases, we have, for example, 217 traces per minute. Then if we click in one of the, the balls, we can see the service details. And there you can see that response distribution. So this is a Lambda. And we can see that, we can see that most of our responses are quite fast. They are, I don't know, under 100 milliseconds. And then we have few little tiny responses that are close to the second. I imagine those are the cold starts of my Lambda. So it's very fast after the Lambda is uh, warm. It's very slow in the other hand. So we can zoom on that bit. So if we just select, we can see that there is some Lambdas that are pretty slow. And there, if we click, we can see the traces that the average response is 900 milliseconds and then we can see each of the traces. So this is pretty nice. So we can uh, see what is going on. So if I click on the trace, then I can see there 
that it uh, shows me the time from zero to uh, one second more or less, that is what it took. And then it shows that the lambda has initialization of like uh, 439 milliseconds. So that um, takes that long. And then uh, storing something in DynamoDB took like 92 uh, milliseconds. So that's why our lambda is very slow. And then if we go to raw data, we can see the segments. So in the case of using uh, X-Ray, you can create your own segments and you can use the library and, and create your own segments. I can do a video about it if you're interested, so let me know. But these are the segments that come um, like by default and the whole uh, information appears here so you can see what is being sent and then this timeline is built with those. So one thing we cannot see in the service map is API Gateway. So that's because the serverless uh, framework plugin doesn't enable API Gateway tracing by default. But as it's not there, then you, what you need to do in order to enable tracing of your API Gateway is to go to the API Gateway service in the AWS console and then go to your service and then go to stages, go to a stage that you want to enable the uh the traces and then login and tracing and click enable x-ray tracing and that should do the trick you save the changes and then you can go back to your service map and refresh and then when we refresh we will start seeing that api gateways are there and we can start doing things with it there we can see that api gateway is being called so if we open it, if we click on that service, we can see also the response distribution and then we can view the traces. So there you can see the URL and if you open the trace, it's like the other one before. This one is a quite awful one because it seems that there was some problem with the queue. That it took two, two seconds just to in the queue time, so that's why this is very slow. I don't know. But, but it's cool to see that these things are appearing here. So you can see if you have any problems with your queue. So if you want to see, like you can check in group by URLs and then you can see all your URLs. You can see the different URLs and the number of traces and the average response time. So we have one post and many gets. So the post is kind of um, many times. We have many traces, but for the get we have maybe one trace per each. You can also group them by status code. For example, if you have some errors by method, you can get on post. Then you can also by the client IP. In this case, we only have one because it's one computer triggering everything by your root causes, by some kind of API gateway annotation ID stages. If there is some kind of um, different root causes, you can also see them here. So there is different ways that you can group the, the traces. This was the video for today, I hope you like it, if you did give a big thumbs up and in the next video we are going to start with third party monitoring tools so if you have any monitoring tool that you would like to see in this series let me know, I don't know how long this series will be, if you're really hooked on it I might make it longer, if not it might be for five, six videos, I don't know, depending on how much interest you have and on how many uh, applications you want to see because it's very fun to explore all these third-party providers. And at, when I finish doing some of these comparisons, I will write a blog post with my opinions on each of these app, uh, kind of tools, AWS and the third parties, and compare them. Because in the videos, I want to not give my opinion. I think it's better to show you how the tool works and, well, you can take your own conclusions. But then I want to... Uh, give my opinions and my take on these tools in this blog post. So stay tuned for that as well. Around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.